So let's get started. Um, first, we're going to introduce the poster winner who's going to give a 10 to 15 minute talk about their work. They're uh, local from Vanderbilt University. It's uh, Ankita Berman. Ankita, come on up. She's going to talk to us about uh, ER stress effector CHOP, which augments uh, alveolar epithelial cell apoptosis and worsening lung fibrosis. Did I get it right? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, uh, thank you for the introduction. I am Ankita, graduate student in Tim Blackwell's lab at Vanderbilt, and uh, I'll be talking about the role of ER stress effector CHOP in lung fibrosis. All right, so, all right, I can see it over there now. So uh, we know that uh, IPF is a devastating disease and it's characterized by progressive scarring that disrupts lung structure and function over time. And in the work that I'll show you here today, we have tried to better understand the pathophysiology of the disease. The alveolar epithelium is critical in disease pathogenesis. It consists of type 1 AACs or alveolar epithelial cells that are structural cells and type 2 AACs that are critical in repairing the epithelium when there is injury. A number of genetic and environmental factors can lead to a vulnerable type 2 AAC phenotype. And when these cells are faced with recurrent injury, which is persistent or which happens chronically, these cells can exhibit abnormal phenotype, such as undergoing increased apoptosis or increased production of profibrotic mediators. Ongoing dysfunction of this sort of these cells can lead to impaired injury repair cycles and if this goes on, there might be abnormal fibroblast activation, matrix deposition and ultimately progressive fibrosis. One of the ways in which the type 2 ACs can react to injury is by experiencing ER stress or endoplasmic reticulum stress. So uh, this is a paper from our lab that was published uh, almost 10 years ago now. And you can see prominent staining of ER stress markers in hyperplastic ACs around areas of fibrosis in lungs of IPF patients. It's been almost a decade now that ER stress has been implicated in lung fibrosis. However, the mechanisms by which ER stress can impact AC dysfunction and lung fibrosis are not clear. When a cell has lots of misfolded proteins, it experiences ER stress, and in response to ER stress, three ER transmembrane proteins, namely PERC, ATF6, and IRA1, get activated. These proteins can together launch a cell signaling network called the unfolded protein response, or UPR. Now, the function of the UPR is to restore cellular homeostasis. However, when ER stress becomes severe or unmanageable, UPR can induce apoptosis as well. One of the primary proteins involved in ER stress-induced apoptosis is CEBP homologous protein, or CHOP. It's a transcription factor in the CEBP family of proteins. It has been implicated in fibrosis in a number of organs, including heart, kidney, and liver. However, the role of CHOP in lung fibrosis is not clear, and that's something that's been a major focus of the work that we'll discuss today. Additionally, the causes of ER stress in lung fibrosis are unclear, and these are the unknowns that we have tried to address in the data that I'll show you. We used the repetitive bleomycin-induced lung fibrosis mouse model. This is a model that was established in our lab six or seven years ago. In this model, we gave six doses of bleomycin to mice at intervals of two weeks. And two weeks after the last dose, we harvested lungs of mice. 
You can see in these pictures here, repetitive bleomycin causes severe fibrosis, and we observe human IPF-like hyperplastic type 2 ACs in areas of fibrosis. You can see that, uh, sorry about that, you can see that the hyperplastic type 2 ACs stained positive for pro-SPC that confirms their identity. These are findings that reproduce what we had found earlier in our published work, and this validates our model. We then went ahead and stained for uh, at ER stress markers. We wanted to look at induction of ER stress in this model. And those are Western blots showing you induction of various ER stress markers in the lungs of mice treated with repetitive bleomycin. You will notice that it also includes CHOP. Uh, if you look at the immunostainings below, it was very interesting to us that there was very prominent CHOP staining in hyperplastic type 2 ACs around areas of fibrosis. So this showed to us that repetitive bleomycin given to mice causes severe fibrosis that is associated with increased ER stress. And uh, CHOP was especially upregulated and uh, prominently expressed in these cells. We wanted to understand the role of CHOP in this model and for that purpose we compared wild type mice with CHOP knockout mice. You can see here, CHOP knockout mice when given repetitive bleomycin were significantly protected from fibrosis. You can see that by morphometry and by quantification of collagen and fibronectin. Also, apoptosis of type 2 ACs is a critical event in lung fibrosis, which is why we wanted to look at it. And we found that CHOP deficient mice were significantly protected from apoptosis of ACs as well. These data taken together suggest to us that after a repetitive bleomycin induced injury, ER stress effector CHOP kills type 2 ACs and augments fibrosis. The other unknown that uh, we wanted to explore here was the cause behind the widespread ER stress that is seen in IPF. A number of factors like mutations in surfactant proteins, infections by herpes viruses, exposure to particulate matter, cigarette smoking have been implicated as inducers of ER stress and IPF. However, these factors are specific to specific subsets of patients, whereas ER stress is a universal phenomenon in IPF, which suggests that there might be additional causes for the ER stress that's observed. We speculated that a combination of low oxygen supply and high oxygen demand could give rise to areas of localized hypoxia in the injured parenchyma, and we wondered would that induce ER stress. As a first step, we looked for tissue hypoxia, and we did that by staining with pimonidazole, which is a chemical marker of hypoxia. We gave repetitive bleomycin to mice, and we injected these mice with pimonidazole a few hours before harvesting the lungs, and we stained for pimonidazole adducts using antibodies. You can see dark brown hyperplastic AACs in areas of fibrosis, reflective of hypoxia in these cells. Furthermore, we observed co-localization between pimonidazole and pro-SPC, which is a type 2 AAC marker, that confirmed our finding and suggested the idea of hypoxia probably being a potential inducer of ER stress. We then went ahead and took human IPF lung sections and stained them for hypoxia markers. We saw prominent expression of a number of hypoxia markers in hyperplastic type 2 AACs, and these were also the cells that stained positively for CHOP, rendering support to the idea of tissue hypoxia-induced ER stress in IPF. With that in mind, we developed an experimental model to further test this idea. 
We treated mice with bleomycin, and seven days later, we either let them be in normoxia for a couple of weeks, or we exposed them to hypoxia. We titrated the level of hypoxia to a degree that caused low mortality. You would observe, you'll observe here that uh, we observed dark brown staining, just like I showed in the repetitive bleomycin model, in hyperplastic type 2 ACs around areas of fibrosis. And when we looked for ER stress markers, we found that exposure of bleomycin-treated mice to hypoxia augmented ER stress. Hypoxia also exaggerated bleomycin-induced fibrosis that you can see here by morphometric measurements and by quantification of collagen. And similar to our observations in the repetitive model, CHOP-deficient mice were significantly protected from hypoxic exaggeration of bleomycin-induced fibrosis, once again pointing to the role of CHOP as a critical ER stress mediator in this disease. With that, I would conclude that after a recurrent injury, we think tissue hypoxia arises in the injured parenchyma Tissue hypoxia then augments ER stress, and ER stress mediator CHOP kills type 2 ACs and ultimately worsens fibrosis. We here have shown that intervention in the ER stress pathway attenuates fibrosis, and this data renders support to the idea of ER stress and lung fibrosis being important. We have found CHOP to be a molecular mechanistic link between ER stress and AC dysfunction, and we think it can probably be pursued in future studies as a therapeutic target. Also, we suggest the idea of localized hypoxia being a potential inducer of ER stress that is seen in IPF. With that, I would like to thank Tim Blackwell, my mentor, for his guidance and support. I want to thank Hari Tanjur, who I've worked very closely with on this project, and all other members of the Blackwell Lab for their help. And I also want to thank my thesis committee. Thank you. We have time, thank you very much. That was a great talk. We have time for one or two questions, if there are questions from the audience. I didn't ask you if you'd be willing to take questions, but <laughs> thank you for doing so. Yeah, come on up to the microphone. Great. I think maybe it's control. Go ahead, we can repeat the question if you just, yeah. I think go ahead, we can hear you and we can repeat the question. If you stand, if you stand for CHOP, you wouldn't, you wouldn't see it in the, you know, is it? Oh, um, could, could you repeat the question? Sure, I'm sorry. If, if CHOP is um, causing alveolar epithelial cell apoptosis, when you stain for CHOP, you're still seeing a lot of CHOP in the cells. So I guess I'm wondering uh, what's the relationship? Right. I, I, I see your point. Um, I don't think that uh, all the CHOP positive cells that you are seeing there are dead. Uh, I would imagine that uh, many of them are dead, some of them are probably dying. And although I showed apoptosis as one mechanism by which CHOP can act, there are other potential mechanisms that CHOP could be involved in. There is some data in diabetes that shows that when you overexpress CHOP, there is more fibronectin expression. So we wonder whether if you target CHOP, is that going to decrease any profibrotic mediator such as fibronectin? So uh, apoptosis is one mechanism by which CHOP is acting, but I would imagine there would be other mechanisms as well. So some cells are still visible. Let's take one more. Uh, thank you, Vaughn. 
Um, I have a question regarding um, the other cell death pathways. Is there something about the alveolar epithelium that makes this calcium dependent pathway uh, so important when we know that the other uh, mechanisms of apoptosis are also calcium activated but probably independent from ER stress? So you have such a robust phenotype when you knock out CHOP. What, what makes CHOP so, or this pathway so important in the alveolar epithelium? And have you seen other cell death pathways activated in compensation when you knock down CHOP? Right. Um, I think compared to other mechanisms of apoptosis, CHOP is probably important because if we think upstream of it, ER stress is so important because of mutations in surfactant proteins. So um, if there is a lot of ER stress, then probably a downstream ER stress effector would be important if ER stress induced apoptosis is the primary mechanism. I'm not sure if that answers your question. Um, uh, as far as the other compensatory mechanisms are concerned, we haven't looked, but we can look at junk or caspase 12 or other e ER stress-related apoptotic mediators, whether or not they go up, or we could look outside of ER stress at, at other mechanisms of apoptosis, but we haven't. Yeah. It'd be very important to know what's happening to all these other self-death pathways. Right, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you.